Hi, it's Chicken Bone John here again with another episode in how to make a cigar box guitar. Today we're going to talk about putting a finish onto our neck. It's a fairly simple process, uh, but I'll talk you through the sort of stuff I use and the pitfalls of the various finishes that you can use. Let's get on with it. Okay, so here we've got a neck that's ready to start uh, being finished. We've got, you know, all the, we're up to having all the frets in and polished. But we've still got a few pencil marks um, and the edges are all still a bit square. So all we're going to do is use a bit of sandpaper to knock this back. This is fairly basic stuff and I don't usually go too fine on this but uh, you know if you're in a, the, the key with this is the more preparation you put in the better finish you end up with. This is a piece of cherry wood all woods react differently. This is quite close grained. If you're using something like poplar or um, oak, it's got a more open grain, so you'll find that they finish differently. Let's start with just sanding it down, and I'm just going to use some ordinary uh, 120 grit paper. And I really want to get rid of these pencil marks in here, so I'm just going to sand this by hand. So I can get into the curve here. Do be careful though because it's always advisable to use a sanding block to avoid rounding over any surfaces. So if I'm going to go on here, my long edges, I've got a bit more control over what I'm doing. This is basic stuff but it's worth mentioning. So I'm using this with a block on the back so it stays nice and flat. I'm just basically I'm just taking off all the sharp edges with this. I'm not putting much of a radius on these. So this is my 120 grit. You can see I've already started wearing through it here. Uh, and I'm just going to go down the length of the neck, work around the heel. Again, just getting rid of the sharp edges. I'm not being too vigorous with it, not overdoing it. Be careful when you're working along here that you don't start marring these nice polished edges that you've already got. You know, if you do scratch them, you can go back with your micro mesh or a fine grade paper to polish them up. And I'm working into the heel, work here, always with the grain of the timber. I've doubled it up. Just give it a little bit more support. I'll probably work that with the block. So again, I'm not rounding that off out of shape. We might want to pay a little bit more attention to the transitions. But I'm just bending it and using my fingers to follow the contours. Again, nothing magical, but I don't want to. I don't want to overdo any of this and make it sort of an unrecognizable shape and we're going to do the same thing in here get rid of any pencil marks and round this over so I'll get my block again this is all with the sort of fairly coarse the 120 so I'm just knocking off these corners as I say using a block just helps keep everything nice and square so you don't end up with any weird shapes always with the grain for the best finish so we're beginning to get rid of our pencil marks now again you can round that off as much or as little as you like it's a matter of taste really I think the, the, your style of doing things we keep things fairly crisp we're beginning to get rid of the pencil marks I'll just put it back down on the bench so I can get a bit more a bit more purchase on this to make sure I truly got all the marks out of this properly Thank you. 
do be careful that you've got your bench clear you're not going to press it into something like a nail or a screw and undo all your good work what I will sometimes do is to keep the block and run it down the length of the neck to make sure there's no dinks or depressions or unevenness in it still working with the 120 here and then when I'm happy with that I can change to my 240 a slightly finer grit and basically do the same procedure again keeping my block there I try and work into this curve but I'll try and work with the grain I'm just going back over everything now just to refine it so you don't want any pencil marks any dirt now this wood we're going to I'm not going to put any stain in this on this at all it's a lovely colour when it gets some oil on you'll probably see that in a few minutes if you're using a very light timber like uh, poplar you might want to stain it darken it down a little bit if you do that what you will notice is that the wood grain will absorb the stain and it'll sort of become a little bit furry uh, sometimes you need to knock that back before you start putting a finish on it I'm just going to come into here just get into the heel by hand and just work every part of the neck until you're happy that's as smooth as it can be now I don't often go beyond a 120 grit we tend to carry uh, sorry 240 grit we tend to carry a lot of 120 and 240 as part of our workshop stock I'm sure a lot of people will probably like to work it way beyond that to a much finer finish but I like to feel the wood a little bit we like to get a nice finish but I am not aiming for a glossy what I call coffee table finish you know like you may get with a factory guitar these are not factory guitars these are handmade small workshop production numbers you can get in the end grain clean can sometimes take a little bit of work but don't neglect it because you, it will show tooling marks if you haven't properly sanded it out okay so that's that I'll just wipe that off get rid of all the dust some people use a tack rag you know something that's got like a little bit of finish or some or a solvent on it that'll get rid of the dust okay we've got a few things that we can use for finishing the guitar neck this is by no means uh, comprehensive but I'll just run through one or two of these things here we've got a wax polish which you just rub on let it dry and then buff off uh, you can put on two or three applications it's not particularly durable but it's very quick and very easy then we've got this sort of finish an oil finish now this is my favorite uh, it's Birchwood Casey true oil made for gunstock finishing and you just rub that on with a cloth a piece of old tea towel or a t-shirt make sure it's clean and not dusty and you just rub that on I was going to show you how we do this and you just put repeated applications until you feel it's about right then there's other things which you can brush or spray here's uh, a waterborne lacquer which we have used on our cheaper guitars that gives a sort of semi satin sheen it's just waterborne um, 
really easy to use. Then uh, you got things like the spray finishers. That's just a common or garden sort of auto lacquer, clear lacquer. That will be an acrylic lacquer. You can buy uh, nitrocellulose in a can. The disadvantages are you will need to mask off your fretboard. Um, and it requires multiple coats, a lot of rubbing down, difficult to get a really nice finish. Uh, not very economical unless you've got a sort of proper spray gun and all the rest, which I'm really not into that. A couple of other things we've got here. This is our uh, fretboard finishing oil. Uh, it's a neutral oil with essential lemon oil in it, often called uh, this lemon oil that's for just putting on the fretboard we don't need to put anything special on the fretboard in terms of finish unless you're using a light colored wood perhaps like oak or maple and we've got a bit of wire wool there for the final buffing out for like satin finish that's tr uh, quadru quadruple O gauge we're just going to put a rubbed oil finish on here We're going to take a clean cloth, this is just a piece of tea towel. I'm going to use some gloves because it will get on your fingers and into any cuts and then if you're doing any other work, you know, you, you can never get the damn stuff out of your hands properly. So I'm just going to wear some ordinary disposable gloves, either rubber, you know, latex or vinyl gloves and we're going to be using this the true oil now give it a good shake up this stuff will oxidize in the bottle so if you have a bottle and it's on and opened and on the shelf a long time it can go quite thick and gloopy so it's always best used fresh so i'm just going to take my cloth put a bit of oil on it and just rub it onto the wood that's all there is to it that really is all there is to it I'm not going to put too much on and I'm going to be careful I don't bleed over the edge of the fretboard and you should be able to see how that colour is developing now go from that pale pink to a nice sort of deep caramel colour. There's no colour cut colouring, no pigments in this oil. It just brings that out in the wood. And that's all there is to it. You just rub it on like that and let it dry. We'll do the whole neck. So don't put too much on. You just want enough and you see so it's just filling the pores of the wood getting it wet but not running don't try and build up too much you just want a, a coat that's wet enough you just want a coat that's wet enough to get into the wood pay particular attention to things like this the end grain where you've got the transition and also at the neck it will tend to soak up the oil a little more than the rest of it so aren't we happy that we've got a nice even coat over everything? You can set it aside and dry. As I say, I'm trying not to get any on the face of the fretboard. And you can see that's come up very nicely. I'll do the other, the last bit, the tail stock. You know, a little bit extra on the end grain. That's just going to soak that up. I'm just getting into the that cut there just so you cover the edge but that's all it needs you set that aside let it dry for a few hours and then you can put another coat on I'll get another neck we've got another neck here this has had already had um, maybe three coats 
and we just build this up one or two a day once it's gone on a few coats it's very easy to overload this you want thin layers lots of thin layers rather than a few thick layers because if you put thick layers on it will just uh, run and get gloopy and take ages to dry the other thing is use use this oil fresh once it starts getting thick uh, it's really past its best so um, I made the mistake of buying a giant bottle of this stuff uh, this is that's eight fluid ounces 240 mil I think I must have bought either a, I don't know what the next one up it might be it might be sort of 16 ounces nearly half a litre and I didn't use it quickly enough and it got really thick uh, wouldn't dry properly you couldn't put it on there was bits in it so that was really false economy you can buy a smaller bottle uh, and if you're only doing a few guitars that might be right for you we do quite a lot so I usually have a couple of these eight ounce bottles to hand so when one runs out I get onto the next one so here we are that's got a few coats on it now that will probably need maybe one or two more coats you can put as many on as you like but I don't go for a high gloss finish I like to have a nice sort of satin sheen and you can see that's building up nicely now so put the top on the bottle screw it down tight there's a few other things like this that you can use um, the some more generically titled Danish oil is very similar various people make it uh, you can use boiled linseed oil not raw linseed oil you'd need boiled linseed oil that's something I've never used some people like it um, just a warning when you finish with the rags they do say with boiled linseed oil it, the, an oil soaked rag can spontaneously combust it sounds crazy but apparently it has happened so you should dump them in a can of water uh, when you're done right that's the basic thing uh, put on as I say as many coats as you like we'll go to the sort of final stage now here's a neck that's already had quite a few coats of oil on it what I would usually do once that's maybe had half a dozen coats if you're lucky you might get a couple of coats on a day but I tend to put one uh, one on a day let it dry and come back to it so it's nice and hard before my final coat I'll tend to rub that down very lightly with a fine grade sandpaper I might even only use the 240 but a piece that's been well used so it's not got much abrasive, abrasive qualities left to it uh, and then I'll give it a final very thin coat of the true oil once that's done and hardened off properly hardened don't rush this we're going to buff this out with some wax this is uh, Liberon Black Bison there's quite a few companies uh, make suitable stuff you want this sort of paste wax and I'm just going to use a bit of wire wool and I say this is quadruple O gauge so I'm going to just take a, a scoop of it I'm going to go over all of this neck right the way round every bit so just lightly if you go heavy with this you will cut through the finish this is only a very thin skin what we're trying to do is just buff out any imperfections any bits of dust I'm not aiming for a super super high gloss finish I want a nice satin finish that you can 
see and feel the quality of the natural wood underneath. That's the way we go. So, you know, you, you might need to pay a little bit of attention to these transitions. So the wax is acting as a lubricant. So you want to keep the this charged with enough wax. Make sure again you're not bleeding it over onto the front edge of the fretboard. So I've just paid a little bit of atten extra attention to the heel and then I can start bringing this in down the whole length of my neck. And you'll feel if there are any sort of imperfections but you might need to hold it up to a different light. Again, make sure you pay attention to all these corners, but be careful you don't rub through on the corners. You know, it's a very thin finish. And I think that's probably about right. What we'll do there is set that aside and let that wax dry out a little bit before we give it a final buff. I've got a towel here that I'm going to use for this and all I'm going to do is just rub. You need to rub quite firmly because you're sort of burnishing this. You want a bit of heat in it so that that oil, so that wax it's going to melt a little bit and get fully spread out. Any surplus will be wiped off. It's, this is all the really simple process, which is why I love this finish. So I'm just paying a bit more attention to the transition and the head around the back of the neck. Can sort of hear it's beginning to squeak a little bit so you don't really want to have any wax left on make sure you do these edges so there's no wax bleeding through onto the face of the fretboard so you don't want to be leaving wax on there it should be sort of polished out burnished quite hard it's quite a vigorous job I can feel feel that the friction warming even through that fairly thick piece of toweling. There it is. My neck's all polished and it's got a nice tactile feel unlike a sprayed finish. I've got a few places here where I can see the oil has just bled over the edge of the fretboard. And what I'm going to do is scrape it off using just a regular scalpel. Better way of doing it. There you can see I can gauge it. So I've just got a little bit of the blade going with the grain, always with the grain. So I'll go down, up and down the whole fretboard, doing that both sides until I'm happy that that's nice and clean. But what we're going to do is going to put some of this on. This is our own fretboard treatment. Again, just a simple piece of cotton. Don't load it up too much. Just to, you see, yeah, hopefully you'll pick that up. Hopefully you'll pick that up on the camera. How that is deepening your colour of your fretboard. Go all the way, all the way up your fretboard. Don't use too much and work it in so it goes right the way up to your fret edges the, where they're coming across so I'm using my fingernails just to get in there, in there. just the end of that where I don't think we've, got, think we've got any finish take the clean side of that and I'm just going to wipe off any surplus
that is the job done. It might want another application if that wood seems particularly dry. Just let it soak in, put another application in. With fretboards, you don't really want a sealing finish, uh, so, you know, like a, an oil that's going to cure, like, like the true oil. Unless it's a light coloured timber that you really want to stop getting dirty, like a piece of maple or oak. But with the darker woods, like this, blackwood tech, rosewood, ebony, <clears throat> walnut, stuff like that, I think a fretboard treatment oil, which won't cure, it will just evaporate and leave just a trace in the wood. So that's taken us from a bare piece of wood to a nice finish. A couple of things. Your preparation work and you're better off with more coats of thin finish than fewer coats of thick. And that applies whether you're using an oil-based finish or a water-based finish that's brushed or a, a, a pots and that polyurethane, which I don't like. I've got to admit, I find it dries rather soft. Um, so it goes for whether it's a, a brush finish, a rag applied oil or a spray finish. Lots of thin coats and rubbing down in between. As I say this cherry wood takes a really nice finish but if you've got something like poplar which is more porous you will find that in places like this the um, the finish will get in and lift the grain and you'll need to sand it back, redo it and you might have to do that two or three times before you start getting rid of the roughness. So all timbers react differently but this is cherry wood is very nice in that respect for taking a finish. The more uh, experience you get the better you will know the different sorts of wood. I hope that's been some help. Okay, so we should have a neck now that's ready to be fitted into the box properly and have all the hardware put onto it so we're getting very close uh, to having a guitar that will work. Putting on a finish is a fairly easy process and as I say, the oil I really like because it's pretty well foolproof. Don't put too much on at a time, let it dry, don't rush. That's the same for any finish, whether it's an oil finish, um, brush applied, whether that's solvent or water borne, or a spray finish. Never put too much on at a time. And if you get any runs, don't keep piling the stuff on. Let it dry nice and hard. That might take a day or two. And then take out any runs and blemishes in the finish with some fine grained sandpaper. Then go over again with your finish. Just take it your time. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now. See you at the next one.